Tired of getting sketchy texts? Imagine having a lie detector that scans your text, email, and social media for risky links, alerting you to scams before you click. McAfee Plus is just like that. Stop scammers in their tracks before they get to you and your personal data. Learn about living a more secure and private life online with McAfee Plus. And learn how to protect your everything at McAfee.com slash podcast. Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform is making it easier than ever to support Black-owned brands. When you go to Walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited, you'll not only get to shop products from Black-owned brands, but also learn about founders like Janelle Stevens of Camille Rose, which specializes in products for naturally curly hair. And there are many more awesome products that you have yet to discover. It's all easy to find with Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform. Join in on celebrating Black brands today and every day at Walmart. We are Black and Unlimited. Visit Walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited to discover more. That's Walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited. Forget your friends, forget your family on Thanksgiving. You must go to your nearest Walmart and make sure you get all of your televisions for nobody else but yourself. Welcome to the Think Different Podcast. It is episode 20. That's right, in Roman numerals, that's two X's. And we are here for the 20th episode. Did I say it's the 20th episode? It is indeed the 20th episode of the Best Worst Podcast. Here to talk Apple news, talk about the Apple industry from your truly, your favorite geniuses. It is Will V here. And, of course, Vacation Tim. Timothy. Yeah, I can't believe we made it to 20, right? Like, that's pretty crazy. Some people never said we thought we'd do it, and we've done it. That's right. You know, my mom, you know, she doubted me. She didn't believe in me. But I said, you know what? I have the strength of t- of 10 Tims and I am able to finally make it here. And just in time for the holiday, because you know what? Tiny Tim never gave up in the Christmas Carol. <laughs> and that's why Tim has inspired me to stay away from that grave. And I am now here with him every single week. Make sure you download all of our episodes every Friday. A new one comes out. And check us out on Facebook, the Think Different Podcast, and of course on the Twitter at Think Diff Pod. And also on our Instagram, which is Think Different Pod. And the Bitmoji Wars continue. Yes. Right. Uh, I just want to shout out to one of our dedicated listeners. Uh, his name is also Will. Um, yeah, I like him. <laughs> He texted us last week after listening to our episode about Disney Plus, saying that as soon as he went home, our episode convinced him to sign up for Disney Plus. So shout out to Will. Thanks for the support and love. And uh, we hope you're enjoying Disney Plus as much as we are. Hey, Will. Do hasmich. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Disney Plus has definitely paid off. You know, I watched the second episode of The Imagineering Story, which has been great. And just watching a bunch of random stuff on there, it's been really fun to go back and watch it. Uh, you know, a lot of people said they had a lot of problems with it, but I can tell you right now, I personally have not had a problem with it. Yeah, I've had zero problems. Uh, I just learned the other day that they actually, all the old Pixar films, they remastered them. So now they're actually in all the new animation versus the old, you know, clay kind of animation that it looked like before. Um, so now it looks all very high tech, <clears throat> very clean, and uh, it looks really pretty. So go back and watch A Bug's Life or Toy, the original Toy Story, and you'll see the animation difference that they made on Disney+. Plus. So uh, interesting, though. Remember, there was a backlash on Twitter this week about The Simpsons. Did you read about that? That I did not. They, they cropped off and made it widescreen. So a lot of the four by three old Simpsons episodes where they had a lot of hidden messages somewhere in the frame were cropped off. And fans uh, were outraged about that. Yeah, I could see how people get upset about yeah, that. Yeah, so right? they there I think they Disney did address it and I think they are gonna plan to bring that back. So that was a little bit of a controversy, but I was like, oh, I really don't okay, calm down. It's just an episode of The Simpsons. You know, you can make it through. All right. <laughs> but we have time to get it. We have some a lot of topics to talk about today. So we're going to break down the news as we always do. We are going to recap my Fifth Avenue visit. That's right. I made it to the Fifth Avenue store to get my screen fixed because I cracked my screen on the bus. So I thought I'd document it. And this will coincide on our YouTube channel because up there right now is a about five to six minute blog video of my visit at the store. Filming the store, getting my opinions on things, uh, watching a creative actually perform 
a workshop in progress. So definitely check it out. We're going to have a little bit about that. And then, of course, it's all about Black Friday. That's right. The busiest shopping day of the year. We were all a part of that for 11 damn years. Tim only got to experience one of them. Really? Yeah, I was, in, I was there for three years, but I only went to one. Wow, look at that, because he was probably on vacation the other two times. <laughs> so we're going to talk about some of the cool Black Friday deals that are going on with Apple products, but also maybe some gift ideas that maybe you just didn't think of. So let's talk about it now, Tim. It is time to get into Tim's worst favorite segment. It is time for the news. The news. Okay, so Apple launches new smart battery cases for the iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, and iPhone 11 Pro Max. All right, so this new battery case, um, it's retailing for $129. If you guys didn't know before, they came out with a smart battery case a while back, um, and they have reiterated it for all the new devices. Basically, it's a hard silicone case. It has a little battery bump in the back. And it works seamlessly with the iOS software in being able to tell you the batteries on the case itself and the battery for your device, battery for your AirPods. It's all on that notification center. What's new about this battery case in specific is that it actually has a dedicated button to launch your camera. Now that it can be launched whether the iPhone is locked or unlocked. As long as you hit that button, on the, it looks like it's on the... If you're looking at the back of the case, it's on the left bottom side. As long as you hit that button, it allows you to open up the camera application in the device, uh, which is actually pretty neat. Um, so it just gives you that quick access. It kind of treats it like almost like an actual camera in a sense. And this is available to order online at the Apple Store now and will be available and start delivering Monday, November 25th. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest. I had no idea about that dedicated camera button. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I wonder how it works within the software. I, I guess they had to build it within the iOS. That was kind of a secret build, I guess. Um, but it's pretty cool. The case, again, looks exactly the same as it did before. You know, they don't love the design of that case at all. A lot of people have controversy behind the case design. You know, I, it doesn't bother me. It just doesn't look, you know, the greatest. It's not the greatest case in the world. Uh, yeah, I had it. I had the old battery case when it originally came out. I want to say it was for the iPhone 7. And I actually loved it. I brought it everywhere. I wore it every day as like a regular case. The silicone, if nobody's ever felt the silicone case before, it's actually a really nice material. Um, it lasts for a long time. Well, I don't know about If that. you take care of it right. I mean, I, I have a leather Apple case on my iPhone 10 now, and I've had that since I got the iPhone 10. So that was two years ago now because I just made my last payment and it's still in great condition. Um, so it just matters on how you treat it. Uh, Apple releases a new iOS and iPad OS 13.2.3. Can you believe it, Will? Another update. No, I'm not surprised. This um, one was so, significant for me, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. T because were you having trouble with your mail or your files or your note app? Well, um, turns out, Tim, ah, I just used an Apple term. <laughs> yes. In fact, it's not only me, but it's any business that uses Exchange, which is pretty much every business in the world. Well, I, I use Gmail at work. You don't have a... Okay, okay. Some Most businesses in the world <laughs> use Microsoft Exchange, and there were issues going on where you couldn't refresh your mail. You were trying to forward or send an attachment from, from a forward mail, and it wouldn't send the whole thing. Here's the funny thing. So I talked to Apple Enterprise about this, too. So Apple oh, yeah? Enterprise told me they know about the issue and they're going to address it but they you know told me and this is the funny part so the the monday which is the day it was released i called enterprise they told me oh yeah they're beta testing it in the next 12 and in the 13.3 in the, uh, the next uh, update uh the big beta update and then 30 minutes later that came out that's funny i was like well why didn't you just tell me that it was coming out today it would have been a lot better just to tell me you were going to release an update today Right, so right, that right. so that was a little annoying that you know they they know the issue's happening. I've called twice about it, and then thirty minutes later it happened. Yeah, it's kind of cool though. Yeah, whatever. You're stupid people. <laughs> but all's well with the world. This is a kind of great, cool announcement. Um, something that Apple's never done before. They're going to be holding a media event on December second, quote unquote, honoring favorite apps and games of two thousand nineteen. 
So special invites were sent out as of Monday of this prior week. Um, the event is going to be held in New York City at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. It's just going to be highlighting, I guess, the favorited apps, music, movies, podcasts. Hey, maybe we'll be on there. Yeah, of course. Um, of, of the year. And they're just going to highlight. It's kind of, I'm imagining they're going to treat it like in a little award ceremony to celebrate, you know, the software and everything that's been going on in the past year. They're not anticipated to be announcing hardware at all, but you never know. But this is kind of a really cool transition for Apple because now you're kind of transitioning from the idea of being a hardware company to a software company, and they're recognizing it by doing this event um, on December 2nd. Uh, Will, do you have any thoughts about this? Do you have any excitement around it? Well, I hope they would let me go considering I'm in the city anyway. That, yeah, that's for sure. Easy. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think it's cool. I think it's a good way to honor people. I, you know, I, I got to tell you, Apple this year, uh, when we do like our, our year review, this has been one of the better years. I, I feel for Apple, which sucks because we've both been out of the company. We were probably with them for the last two worst years. <laughs> uh, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. I think that's cool. I think that's, uh, that they're going to honor some people and, and do a fun event. I would love to be around that. And I think, yeah, I think the Think Different podcast deserves uh, a treatment for you know doing the, the great deed that we are of performing for you and giving you this great audio content every single week on friday by the way that it comes out <laughs> yeah I mean, it'd be super cool and um, then of course apple legal would probably hear what were some of the things we're saying and then yeah then we probably wouldn't have a podcast anymore <laughs> yeah i mean i'm sure they're monitoring what we're saying but yeah, we're good. We didn't do anything. Until we're bad. taken down. Yeah, we were. We'll so I'll tell you what. On. I got. I got. How about this? I will promise Apple if they, if you give us the gold app award for the best podcast, I promise I will not talk about Mobile Genius or Concierge. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Moving but, uh, on. No, the event should be cool. I I probably will tune into it. I wonder how long the event will be. All right, now that we're done with the news, it's time to talk about my visit to the Apple store at Fifth Avenue. This store just opened back up a couple of months ago. In fact, it opened up on the day of the launch of the iPhone 11. And that was the first day it opened up. I got to tell you, it's a major difference. Now, Tim, have you ever visited that store? Uh, I have the old store, yeah. Okay, so you, I don't know how well you remember the store as far as the layout. There were these cash registers that are on two different sides of the of the Fifth Avenue store. One was like a cashier and one was like the Genius Bar. Well, that's completely gone. They got rid of that completely. Right. They turned it into one side being the workshops and one side being the HomePod room. But man, it, you talk about a difference. It's it's not like as far as like it's still a big rectangle, okay, with the roof on it. Now I want to talk about my Genius Bar appointment for a little bit. So I didn't want to reveal I was a former Genius, so I wanted to kind of see get the real experience. Uh, as far as my appointment time, I got there on time. I was seen within a couple minutes. It didn't take long at all, so there the timing was great. They did run their diagnostics software, which I won't mention what it is. You know, just like a, a small MRI on that you call an MRI on the whole thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not giving away at all. Think of it like an MRI for your body. Uh, <laughs> so they ran it, everything was good, and then they gave me the turnaround time, which was something they already implemented where they give you an estimated quote time. So it was about an hour to get it done, which I kind of expected it to be for that. Yeah, it's not bad. And eventually I did tell uh, when I looked at what she wrote on the now, Mobile Genius was clearly right in front of me. I could see the app. And she's writing down that I'm paying $279 for the repair. I know I have Apple Care Plus. So I'm letting her write it, and she's about to finish it. I said, listen, do you want to relook really at your notes again? Uh, you know, I have Apple Care Plus. So I wanted to stop her because I wanted to educate her that, hey, you really need to take a look at my history here. So I kind of helped her out, and I said... Uh, and then she also wrote uh, the words MRI in my document. In fact, I'm going to pull up my document. The work authorization? The work auth which they call the work authorization. Let me get that up here right now. It says, customer says display is cracked. Steps to reproduce. Observed issues in store. Ran MRI and no issues found. Cosmetic condition. Multiple cracks in display. LCD uh, LCI clean. The proposed resolution. Display for $29 plus tax. Customers aware of potential data loss and... 
recro if liquid or modifications are found internally, and that's what it says. For anyone that doesn't know what LCI means, it's liquid contact, contact indicator. indicator. Now that's not that's not hidden. You can actually look that up. The glasses on the back of the iPhone display had a little bit of a scratch in it. Now I don't know if that was there prior or not, but yeah. that is something I could have easily went to the admin and said, "Hey, I see a scratch on the back here. That wasn't documented here in this document." Yeah, so, I mean, if it was that noticeable, right? Yeah. I I, don't, I would say it's noticeable, but it's there. You could definitely see it. If I really pointed my finger at it, you would see it. Right. You're going to get customers that are like that. I hate to say it. That's why it's important. I, and I can tell you, we were pretty good at this, of documenting every single detail that you see. And I thought we were very good as far as a store perspective. And I, and I gave feedback to the MRI when she wrote MRI in there. Because there was always that MRI is not a great idea to write in there. Because that's not what... An, who knows what an MRI is? Right, right. It's like language that we use right. as employees, but it's not language that's necessarily transferable to them. So it's a, I told her, why don't you put shortcuts in your device? So we used to do that. You could t you, If you remember yep. my notes, yeah. when I put MRI, it would fill out the name of the app, and then in parentheses would put MRI. So in the future, if someone wrote MRI, you, don't have to, you could ref reference it from what I wrote in the original document. I would write out liquid contact indicator and fill that out so to me that was one thing I gave her as feedback and then eventually I told her I was a genius so that way she understood why I was doing that because I knew everything she was running so I explained to her why that that works out and I explained the court case that Apple was involved with at one of our guys at our store and it Whoa, referred yeah, so that's and, it, good. and it referred about writing MRI or writing those terms that we know that the customer won't. I'll tell you, they got my phone done on time. I went 15 minutes early. It was done 15 minutes early. So nice. I found out on the paperwork afterwards, it was done about five to 10 minutes before I even came back. So it was done even quicker than that. The HomePod room is awesome. Yeah, you'll see yeah, the video that looks of me. Awesome. That, yeah, the HomePod room is really cool. I really enjoyed that. They have I only one or? They split the room in half. That way, when you're listening to one thing on one side, you really don't hear the other one. Cool. You can, but it's still really neat. And then the creative. That thing was awesome. That yeah. big screen, what a difference that makes from going to that store and then going to, you know, Free Old Wasteway Mall. <laughs> right, right, right. You know? <laughs> so yeah, it's so different, right? It's completely different, and it's not as fun. It's not as engaging because you're not sitting on the boxes. You're sitting on stools. That big screen with the creative talking was fun. They have about five people waiting on the bottom of the steps. Now, I thought this was weird, too, and this is something a little different that we did. When I wanted to check in for my reservation, I had to go to somewhere specifically to do that. If you remember in our store, everybody who was in the front who was basically the on-point person, yep. anybody could check them in or do it. But I had to go to somewhere yeah, specifically. Us. Now, I thought that was like the old school method of what we used to do. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It might be a way that they just ha know how to control traffic. You know, like old reliable, it works, so they're not going to change it. Yeah, I, I can see that because also that's where the genius area is, and then you need to point you to the right table. So that I could I could definitely see your point. Like I said, that store is probably an exception to a rule. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But overall, if you guys get the opportunity to go there, you can see the lights coming in from the bottom, which is really neat. Uh, go check it out one day. Enjoy the store. Try stuff on. It's an amazing amount of people that take video in there. It's like a tourist spot. Oh, it definitely is. One of my friends, I got them hired at that Fifth Ave store uh, a couple years ago. If you guys don't know, it's a 24-hour store, so it's open, you know, all all yeah. throughout the day. You can make jeans so, by reservations at night. Yeah. So the like my my buddy used to work like an 11 to 2 a.m. shift. You know, like he would just go in after class, he'd go cut for a couple four-hour shifts or whatever, and then he'd come back at like 3 a.m. So that's got to be cool from a from a. Uh, employee perspective as well coming from another apple store and going to the fifth app store where it's just so different there's probably employees you don't even know or you've never met they because don't because there's so many i actually know? i worked there one day they definitely told me there's no way they can know everybody in the store there's just no way that's that's pretty crazy i, I would love to see it from an employee side because for how big the store is it's probably controlled madness to them then from a customer's perspective it's like wow this like this store is really cool and especially all the updates that they've done it's definitely a cool place to check out and it's easily accessible on, on 7th, 5th Ave and stuff like that so yeah 
for this final segment, we are going to talk about Black Friday deals for Apple products and then talk about three gift ideas that we would suggest that maybe people that you love would love to have. So let's get to it. It is time for our Black Friday special, special, special. Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plug During Chris Howard. BetOnline continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs. Whether it's pro or college hoops, BetOnline has it all throughout the entire college and pro hoop season. BetOnline has up-to-the-minute odds, stats, and trends you can follow all season long. Follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in-game live betting contests and all the best player props. And you can follow on your desktop or your mobile device. So head to the website today and become part of the team. BetOnline, the game starts here. Nervous about using public Wi-Fi? Imagine being able to turn yourself invisible to hackers on public networks. Having McAfee Plus is just like that. With the click of a button, you can disappear from hackers trying to steal your data and snoop on your internet activity. Browse, shop, and bank confidently, knowing your privacy and safety are protected. Get all-in-one protection with McAfee Plus and learn how to protect your everything at mcafee.com slash podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Fake Different Podcast. It is now time to talk about our Black Friday specials. Now, we went scowling through the entire world to find the best deals for your Apple products or accessories for this holiday season. I'm going to start off with my, one of mine. The Apple Watch Series 3, 38 millimeter, 129 Where? Walmart. Wow. That's What's, a pretty uh, good deal. Oh, you said 38 millimeter though? Yeah, of course. It's always the smaller one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's going to always be the smaller one. So the regular price for a Series 3 is right now $200. So you get it for $129 at Walmart. That's a great deal. You know, I don't yeah, know how Apple's really going to combat deal. this. We'll talk about how Apple kind of combats this at the end. Yeah, and just to bounce off you, I also found a deal on an Apple Watch, but not oh, the sure. Series 3, the Series 4. Now, yes, this is a Apple Watch Series 4 GPS plus cellular 44 cellular. millimeter that is a space black stainless steel case with a black sport band for three ninety nine. That's almost that's three hundred fifty dollars off. A lot of money off. That is three hundred fifty dollars. That's not. I, we're not. Ta- we're not talking about the aluminum too. case. This is stainless steel with cellular and the biggest model, and that could be found on Amazon. There you go. That's a great deal. And I, I don't know how long Amazon deals are going for, but remember they also have Cyber Monday deals too. They always are right. known. They're also yeah. known for that. The and the four is still a great watch. In fact, there was no reason to make a five to be honest with you. So and the fact that it's cellular, that's pretty amazing. I got one from Target, and this actually is going to be iTunes gift cards. Buy one, get one thirty percent off. Of an iTunes gift card, that's cool. Mm-hmm. I like that. And the reason why I like that the most is that you can use iTunes gift cards to pay for your iCloud storage. Yeah, that's right, right, right. So you can never actually hit it. Your or Apple card if or you're, your credit card. If you are still using Apple Arcade, you could use that as well. That's a pretty good deal because most of the time, maybe you'll get if you buy like a hundred dollar card, maybe you'll get it for like ninety, maybe eighty five. You know, so thirty percent. You're talking about like a thirty dollars savings on a hundred dollar card. That's sure. a pretty good deal. Yeah, no, that's great. Apple ten point two inch iPad, which is the latest model, thirty two gigabyte space gray, is going for two ninety nine. So it's about thirty bucks off at B and H. Uh, which is pretty cool. So now I I would expect Apple to actually do the same thing at their store with that. At least I think that they kind would. of deal, like thirty bucks off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just uh, looks nicer to say two ninety nine instead of three twenty nine. Of course, yeah, of course. Uh, another good one, AirPods. So Apple AirPods with a charging case uh, at Walmart, they are going to be discounting it down from one fifty nine to one twenty nine. Yes, yeah, so Walmart. I saw that on. Rakuten as well, but you can only buy it at that price if you're a member of Rakuten. I'm probably butchering the name. 
Um, uh, who gives a crap? It's, it's Rec you whatever. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, you can get it at the same price, but probably go to Walmart to do it because you don't have to be a member to Walmart. Everyone's right. a member. Everyone's a member here. This one's a good one, too. Now, this is a little bit out of the box. So, Brookstone. So, everyone remembers Brookstone. I loved Brookstone. Yeah, me too. I, yeah, I know. It sucks. But they're still making products. So, they made a mat. It's like a charging mat, a stand for your iPhone, and the watch all in one device for $50. So, that's not too bad. It's So, it's basically what the you know air power was supposed to be when it was a lot to more fancy. Yeah. <laughs> So um, for, I thought that was a pretty good deal. Yeah. And that's actually at J.C. Penny. Oh. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. So anybody that needs a iPhone for their mom or their dad or their grandparents and they don't want to be tied into a phone plan, you can actually go to Best Buy, get an iPhone SE 32 gigabyte on Simple Mobile, which is a paid per like prepaid plan. For fifty nine dollars, isn't that crazy? That's a good deal. You get an iPhone SE for sixty bucks. Yeah, but I, you know, the plan type that you have to be in is, uh, you know, kind of kind of sucks. Yeah, prepaid. If nobody knows about prepaid, um, you basically pay per month um, based on the service that you're going to be anticipate using for the next month. So whether or not you want to pick minutes or internet, two gigs of internet, whatever. A lot of international internet and phone companies do the prepaid cards it's not really popular in the u.s but yeah it definitely is an option with simple mobile uh, best buy's got a lot of good accessories coming out the echo dot is going to be 23 dollars for an echo dot which is pretty cool i just set mine up you know they have amazon fire stick that's uh 25 dollars it's a 4k one right now the apple airpods pro on amazon are t- uh, is two hundred thirty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents. So you're saving about fifteen bucks, which I guess is cool. But that's only a limited supply as well, and that won't be up very long on Black Friday, I imagine. Do you have any more? Because those are the only ones I really thought that stood out to me. Yeah, I mean, there's always discounts on TVs and stuff like that. I mean, I, I guess that's the best time to I buy mean, a TV. Here's the thing about TVs, guys. All right, for, first off, you buy it for yourself. You're not buying it for other people. Okay, Let, let's just be real here. Right. Right, I I never see anybody go buy a TV and be like, oh, here you can have this for a gift for your holiday, and then you don't buy them anything else because you save so much money on a TV. <laughs> That's what happens. For, like you should buy that yourself. You know, you shouldn't buy it for somebody else. What if they? Well, you don't know what they need on it. Like how many HDMI's do they need on it? What like do they understand refresh rates? You know, it's like little things like that. You yeah, know, sure, TVs, sure. No, but to be honest, people are buying that stuff for themselves. I don't care what anybody says. That's all the Apple deals that are out there. Now we want to talk about gift ideas. I'm going to start off with mine. And my favorite toy that I got last year was the Ember Temperature Control Mug. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. This mug sits on a charging stand and you set a temperature rating for it based on what kind of temperature you want like your coffee or your tea or your cappuccino and it stays charged for 80 minutes on one charge so that's that's a long time yeah Yeah. so it's designed for your home or office the ember mug is a companion app on your iphone or apple watch and allows you to set the precise drinking temperature for hot beverages track caffeine consumption Save presets for your favorite drinks and customize the LED color that's on the bottom. Ooh. Ooh. And now they finally come out with a newer uh, size, which I think is great because I, I wanted the bigger mug because mine's too small. I have an 8 ounce, so it's very small. Right. But now they have a 10 and a 14, which is awesome. That was one of my good like, gift ideas. Now, if you want to know the price for that, I guess you would like to know what that is, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's probably important. Then they're $100 for a 10 ounce. And a 14 ounce is one twenty nine ninety five, but I would tell you to get the 14. For thirty dollars more, you might as well get the 14. I didn't expect that kind of price. <laughs> oh, what'd you think? How much it was? Oh, like sixty dollars. Nah, yeah, no, these are expensive mugs. Yeah, pass on that. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, it's worth having it. Um, don't yes. don't judge it. Don't judge it. <laughs> when you have a when you have a because you hate don't you hate going to the microwave and microwaving your shit? Well, first of all, I don't drink coffee. Okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Tea Guy. <laughs> so I only drink tea, and I also hate when it's really, really hot. I rather prefer it to be like... But you set the temperature. 
That's my point. I know, but okay. I was pondering uh, Apple's accessory website, and I noticed, I remember in the keynote uh, two years ago when they announced the partnership with Lego and their AR kit. Um, so now it looks like they've released Lego products on the website that actually can be interacted within the augmented reality through the iPhone app. Nice. Um, so they have ones for like themed of like a paranormal intercept bus. They have a wrecked ship bow, a graveyard mystery. Obviously this is kid themed Newberry haunted high school. Um, but it's super neat. I mean, just imagine the creativity that can go into and how much fun a kid can have being able to build it first of all and then being able to yeah they're actually very very relatively priced um the most expensive one is this haunted high school which is 129 dollars but you can get the intercept bus the paranormal intercept bus for 59.95 the ship boat for 29.95 the graveyard mystery for 29.95 i mean it's very affordable that's cool and it's kind of taking the idea of when you build a Lego and you're like, okay, that's the fun of it. Make I built it, it. But now yeah. you're actually being able to interact with it more um, using tech, the cohesion of technology and physical um, product. I think it's so cool. And I, I think kids would have so much fun with it. That's neat. I like that idea. I think that's a great idea for kids. I remember a long time ago, I had to sell those Aki drives. They were the remote control cars that went around the track and you're yeah, yeah. against each other. Those things are so, so cool. So as a creative, one of the things I got to do one year was showcase all these cool tools. It was like the basketball that showed you how to be a good basketball player, the Aki drive, the robot. Uh, I forget what that robot was called, the one that rolled on the floor. Spiro? Uh, Spiro, thank you. Uh, So I got to demo all these toys, and I couldn't believe how good of a salesman I was because I sold a lot of them. My goal (laughs) was to sell every Aki out, and we did. We sold every Aki. We were sold out of them. And then they all came back. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's I why mean, they're not in business anymore, folks. Yeah, <laughs> and they're not sold at Apple anymore. Um, no, also, not. if a child is expressing interest in technology and stuff like that, Apple has so many kid-friendly STEM and coding programs that your child should definitely be immersed inside. If they're a Harry Potter fan, they have a Harry Potter wand coding kit. Um, if you're into robots, they have a coding kit for that. If you're into Play-Doh, they have a coding kit with that. It's just that if you're into soccer and sports, they have a coding robot with a soccer ball. I mean, it's just so cool. Um, I wish I'm hoping that around the holidays, there might be some large demos that we can see, you know, w- whether that's in a Fifth Avenue store or the old stores that we used to work at, seeing these kind of uh, toys being demoed. Um, they have I, to. I, I. They have to. Yeah. For me, it's like it's the only way you could sell it is by seeing it. A lot of times, you can't stare at, uh, you know, the Lego kit without actually physically taking a phone and physically seeing what it's going to do. Or else, it just looks like another Lego kit. It would be really cool if Apple changed their display for the holidays and had an entire dedicated Lego land in like a corner. Oh, that'd be neat. That'd be really cool. That'd be cool, but you have to use your iPhone to to see where it's going on. That's pretty cool. I yeah, really like that. Yeah, that'd be I, would, cool. I would require a lot of work though to put together and shake for feedback, being, right? Be, being for somebody who used to do those front uh, displays, I would kill you. <laughs> well, I would hope it would come already pre-built. No, a lot of that stuff didn't back in the day. <laughs> you can't, you can't like when we had those Santa, like the remember the cartoon that we they did with the Mac vs PC. Well, they had like a Santa one, and there was a cartoon Santa. And I had to put that thing together, and it was a pain in the butt. Especially the stupid light tubes I had to represent the earbuds. Oh, man. It broke all the time. (laughs) All right. So the next thing I thought is everyone at some point needs to be in the home space, the home kit space. Oh, yeah. 100%. And the best thing for me to buy is a Philips Hue white starter kit. Like that is a no brainer to me. It's like the number of, it's probably the first thing I would tell people to get into using HomeKit. So I started off with the Philips Hue. Uh, and I have a bunch of light bulbs in my house. In fact, it's in my office. I have it in my bedroom. I have it in my living room. I now have, you know, things like the, like the Ember mug. I have the 
the door in the front of my house is lock proof with with uh, home kit Siri controlled. So I think the Philips Hue white starter kit's good. It's a hundred dollars. It's a lot cheaper than it was back when I first started. Remember, it was like one ninety nine. It was like one ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that was for the, now. That this is not for the colored kit. This is for oh, the just plain, white balance. Just a white. Yep. So, but I still think for a hundred dollars is a good deal. You get a hub that you connect directly to your router, and you get three lights. Uh, actually, they're giving you four lights now to start off with. They used to give you just three. Now they give you four. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah. You get definitely a lot of cool things with the Hue. I remember a gentleman that worked at our store. Uh, he was a big Jets fan, and every time the Jets would score a touchdown when he was watching football, he had like a preset thing that the lights would do that turned colors green and went all crazy yeah. like that so i that's do that pretty cool yeah so when I, whenever i have like wrestling parties and someone's coming down the aisle i will change the lights around to match the tone of the wrestler that comes down the aisle nice nice yeah so it, there's a lot of cool things to do but also you could set scenes like so if i said you know hey blah good night it turns all my lights off in my home except my bedroom ones that's you cool. Know, it's, yeah, see, yeah, like, those are the so kind cool. of thing. That's just an idea of what you could do. And my parents got into it, and they love it. They absolutely love it. So I, I would recommend getting a Philips Hue kit for someone that's starting off new because you know what? It's a gift that they wouldn't think about. And it I was just going to say that. Yeah. Not to mention these light bulbs don't have to be changed for ten years. Yep. Yep. The last product that I want to share is another product that's only sold to Apple. It's this Apple Watch Band portfolio. They're calling it. Um, so if uh, you're, I saw that. Okay. Yeah, ahead. if your dad travels a lot, or if you have a friend that travels a lot and likes to take many bands with them, um, this portfolio actually lays out the uh, Apple Watch bands very nicely. It packs your Apple Watch, your charge cables, all, all the whole nine yards, um, and it keeps it in a nice organized case. Um, so it's kind of a super, co- kind of a cool like if you need an idea gift for your dad or someone that is very into their Apple Watch, um, this might be a good idea for them. How much is that? Hundred dollars. Oof, that's a lot. It's leather. I don't care. (laughs) But yeah, it is. Jeez, that is really high. I'll go on Amazon get a cheap one. I like the idea of it because my my bands are just laying everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I just throw mine like the front of my book bag, and they all get tangled and stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's expensive. Ooh, it's vegan leather. Leather. That's why. Oh my god. (laughs) Vegan leather. 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 All right, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so the final thing I had on my list is one of my favorite things I use on my wedding gigs, and that is the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 Gimbal Combo. Everyone should know what this is by now, but if you don't, transform your videography with DJI's Osmo Mobile. It is a foldable, lightweight, portable, three-axis stabilizer for your iPhone. Now, I had the very first Osmo. It has improved greatly since I've had the Osmo on the first one. Uh, as far as the active track feature and the fact that it's got different shooting, more shooting modes than it did before. But if you want to stabilize your hand when you're shooting video with a phone, this is a great tool. Like if you're going on vacation like to Disney or something, you want to record things, having this handy with you, because this is not, it's not a selfie stick, which, you know, are banned in Disney, but you could bring this right. in there and it stabilizes all your footage. It'd be great on rides too, like to go on rides with. And if you're like, you need to hold on to something and you want to, you know, whatever, you can be creative. Yeah, no, uh, that, that's always been a cool product. So you could buy the Osmo Gimbal Combo for one thirty nine ninety five, which is a lot cheaper than it was the first time. It was it used like two ninety nine. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was like three hundred bucks the first time. Yeah. Or if you don't need the combo kit, which is really just the tripod stand. It is, uh, it's 120. So you got a tripod stand with the one, the other one you don't. But you might as well get the tripod stand. You might as well get the tripod stand, yeah. Especially that you can let that active track yourself. So if you want to do like YouTube videos and you want it to like track your movement, if you're moving around in the frame, this can track you. That's so super it, cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Hope you guys took away something from this and I hope you guys enjoyed some of the things we looked at with the Black Friday deals. And download some apps. There's a lot of apps out there. Like the Black Friday app is probably my most popular one I use all the time. You can add a wish list so you can put everything together that you want to uh, buy somebody. And, of course, we have Cyber Monday coming out after that. So it's exciting. It's fun. Uh, Black Friday is one of the craziest days in retail. It is a day you cannot get off except for Tim for two years in a row. (laughs) Uh, And other than that, you know, I worked every Black Friday except for one year, and that's when I had my injury on my my leg. You might remember that. Yep. uh, When I was out for three months. So... 
Other than that, I was a part of 10 different Black Fridays. That's hell. <laughs> part-time life, baby. Yeah, good for Timothy here. It was part-time <laughs> life going on vacation to Nashville, Tennessee. Tennessee. To see his, to see his angel wings. <laughs> I, went, his- I went there and it was raining and no girl was out there. So it was funny. And he got his sushi on with uh, for whatever reason in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So that is our episode this week for the Think Different Podcast. Make sure you share your ideas. Share it in our Think Different Podcast Facebook page. Anything that you think is a good Black Friday deal that we did not cover. And, of course, stay tuned because on Apple.com, typically every year they will come out with some kind of deal. Now, you can go to the store and do it or you could do it online. It doesn't matter. So just remember that Apple does do some kind of Black Friday deals. Typically, they're not the best ones uh, ever. I don't remember a year where it was like, wow, that's like, the best deal ever. Uh, a lot of them are small, and they're, but most people come in for education. Apple does do a price match up to a certain amount. Yes, um, they will it, do that. It will not be, if the deal is like outwardly crazy, Apple won't price match it. But they have a set amount of percentages that they can go. It's the major retailers that they actually give approval for them to sell Apple certified products. Now, last year, remember too, Apple did the shopping event from Friday to Monday. They did it for That's four right. days. That's right. Yeah. So when they're doing it one day, we we did it four days, and you know, max for like two hundred dollars off. Select iPads were a hundred dollars off. It wasn't like an Apple Watch was like fifty dollars. But what they did was they gave you gift cards. They they never give the money off. They always yep. give you gift cards. So I always tell people get Apple Care with those cards, or you know, buy something else that's a good accessory with it. That's what, that's the goal anyway. But we had it four t- four days last year. I, I, I just totally, when I looked it up right now, I totally now remember that that was exactly what happened. So the entire week we were busy. The entire weekend because everyone's deals were done on Thursday and Friday. Yeah. That was it. And then we were the only one that had all these deals. So it was a, it's a, I hope they do that again. That was actually a very good idea. I'm sure they will. And also just another reminder, Apple is not open on Thanksgiving. No, they will be open they never Friday. Are. But they never are open on actual Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, they and want honestly, everyone to enjoy and, their time with their family and stuff. Yeah, and honestly, I I, I find that really awesome with our uh, you know our a lot of it's manager discretion too, and because they don't have to open. Remember, malls do find stores for not opening for certain reasons, and yep. you know, you know, a lot of those managers do not care. They are not going to open up on Thanksgiving. The only, the earliest I ever woke up to go to a store was like six a.m. I had to be at the store at six a.m. That's it. Yeah, but on the following day. Which is reasonable. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And I can't wait to watch the Cowboys, even though every time the freaking dinner's ready, the damn game's on. (laughs) Yeah, they always have the late game, right? Yeah, the the 4 o'clock game. Yeah, the 4 o'clock. During the turkey time. (laughs) But more importantly, Tim, you should also watch the Turkey Bowl, the greatest event in our sport. Yeah? That's right. I'll send you a link to it. All All right, right, guys. (laughs) Take care. Have a great Thanksgiving. Tim will probably be on vacation somewhere going on his Thanksgiving trips. And uh, we will see you guys next week for another episode of the Fake Different Podcast. Peace out.